Hi, today I'd like to show you how to harden the virtual private server your OpenBazaar daemon is running on. First thing you want to do is make sure you are able to log in using SSH keys. If you followed my first video tutorial thingy, then you're already set. But just to make sure and to show you, I'm exiting and then logging in with an SSH identity file. You'll see her. Um, and I'm not using a password password login. Okay, so I'm able to log in using SSH keys. That's perfect because we're going to disable password authentication so nobody can brute force um, log in to our server. To do that, we're going to edit the um, SSHD, the SSH daemon config. Enter in my password here. I'm just going to copy and paste it from my notepad. And somewhere down here, there's going to be um, a directive password authentication right there. And we can see it's common to doubt. We're just going to remove the hash at the start to to make it non not a comment. And then we're going to choose uh, change this yes to a no. Password authentication is a no. And then because this is Volter, um, I know from the past that they actually just put in their own down here. So I'm going to change that to a no. Because there's two password authentication directives in this file, the second one is the one that takes effect. So this bottom one is the only one you need to edit on Volter. But if you're on a different VPS, you probably won't have this bottom one. All right, next we're going to disable the root login. And that means uh, we won't be able to log in as root anymore. You may choose not to do this, but I normally do because I log in as a different administrative user. In this case, I log in as the Open Bazaar user, and that's what I'm logged in as now. Where is this? Uh, disable root login. There's allow root. There's a directive in here. Allow root is what I'm looking for. Ah, permit root login is set to yes. We're changing that to a no. And then finally, we're going to make OpenBazaar the only allowed remote user. This is optional, but I like to do it. Allow users OpenBazaar. I'm just adding that to the very bottom of this file. And I'm saving and closing. All right, good to go. Now, if we log out, and then try to log in again. I'm going to hide my face. Um, I'm going to try to log in as root. And it should not work. It worked. Okay, so I'm going to exit. Log, ban log back in as OpenBazaar. I guess I could have done this as root, but I'm going to restart the SSH daemon. Paste in my password. Okay, now I'm going to restart. Or, excuse me, I'm going to log out and log back in. Oops, I want to log in as root to see if root can log in. And he cannot. Okay, perfect. I'm going to log back in as OpenBazaar. And we're good on that step. The next step is to set up SSL. And this is for a connection between the OpenBazaar client on my local computer. See this thing? It's a beautiful interface. This is so the local client can connect to the OpenBazaar server daemon on the VPS with uh, an encrypted connection. This is important so nobody, uh, no man in the middle attacks can happen. All right, so first we're going to Make sure we have OpenSSL installed. I think it is by default. So the first command we're going to run as uh, run using the OpenSSL command is gen RSA. We're creating a certificate authority key. And just to make sure we're um, putting the keys where they should be, let's cd to the OpenBazaar server directory, just for convenience, so we don't have to copy them later. We're going to generate all the keys in the OpenBazaar server directory. So first, we're going to generate SSL key. Open SSL 
gen rsa out root ca.key with the length of 40 and 96 bits. All right, so we've got our certificate authority key. Next, we're going to create a root ca self sign certificate. I'm just going to paste that one in because it's kind of long. And I'm going to go over some parts of it. Open SSL is the main command, and that's a subcommand. This thing do a, a generate a self self signed certificate. Um, that's saying not do not encrypt. This oh yes, this is the key to use. And the number of days this self signed certificate will be valid. It's 1,024 days. So you're going to have to renew this in a few years, <laughs> but. You might have there might there might be an easier way to do this at that point. Then the output file is um, root ca.crt, and then we got this big long string as the subject, and this is locality information like the country is Germany, the state is Germany. It doesn't have to be set to your local your local place. It doesn't matter because of the way it's being used. So you could change it if you want, if you're if that sort of thing bothers you. But for this instance and for your instance, it doesn't actually matter. So I'm just gonna click enter and go ahead and make that certificate. I'm gonna make sure it you know outputted the certificate because it ran kind of quick. And it did. It's root ca.crt. Okay, so next we're going to generate a server private key with the command Open SSL gen RSA to output to server dot key length forty ninety six bits perfect. Now we're going to convert the certificate request into a self signed certificate. Here's another long command, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. All right, I'm going to run that one, and we have a error here. Whoops, I skipped a step. So there's another command that I need to run. I'm going to paste it because it's a long one. And this will be in the video description below so you can paste it as well if you're doing this. Okay, now I can run that previous command that failed. Perfect. Sweet. What we've done is create the SSL keys needed to, uh, to establish a secure connection between the OpenBazaar client and the OpenBazaar server. So next we're going to enable SSL on the OpenBazaar server. And we'll do that using nano. And we'll edit the file ob.cfg in the current directory. And then we'll find the authentication section right there. SSL is set to false. We need to uncomment that line by removing the hash and then change false to true. And then SSL cert uncomment that line and also uncomment SSL key, the SSL key line, and then change the path here. I'm just going to delete this whole path and change it to um, server.crt, which is in the current directory, and then the SSL key is going to be set to server.key, which is also in the current directory. It's those keys that we just generated. And that's it for this file. I'm going to exit and save. And then the next step is to copy the SSL keys to their places. Since we're in the current working di directory of the server itself, we don't need to copy the uh, server's keys. They're already in their place. What we need to do is copy the client's keys or singular key. So we're going to do this through the command line inter interface. We're gonna, going to transfer a file from the VPS to our local computer. And what we're going to do is log out using exit. Then we'll use the command SCP, which is secure copy. And then we use it uh, very similarly to the SSH command. Um, but this time we want to specify the identity file first. And I believe it's with a capital I. I'll find out here shortly. First we uh, tell it the identity file to log in with. And then next we tell it the server to log in to, well, the user on the server, open bazaar at the server IP address, which is right here. I'm just going to copy that. 
followed by a colon, and then the path on the VPS of the file we want to copy. And that's uh, we need to give it an, an absolute path. We can't use shortcuts like tilde home open bazaar uh, open bazaar server and capitalizations matter root ca dot crt and we want to copy uh, then a space followed by the path we want to copy this file to on our local machine and I'm going to copy it to my downloads folder and you push enter and there was an error maybe it's not capital like I was thinking it is not capital capital I it's lowercase i perfect all right we've copied the client key to our local computer now we just need to install it or uh, we need to put it in a place to where open bazaar the open bazaar client can make use of it this varies on operating uh, depending on your operating system I'm on a Mac so I'm gonna do it the Mac way if you are not on a Mac go ahead and check out this slack file which tells you what to do with the um, the key on the client side depending on what operating system you're on I'll link to that in the description below for this video what I'm gonna do is um, all you have to do on a uh, Mac is open the certificate and um, OS X's keychain system keychain will um, import the certificate but I'm on a command line interface so I'm just gonna use the open command which is pretty much just like clicking in finder downloads root ca.crt I can see my keychain program is running I'll show you that keychain access root ca right there this this root certificate is not trusted. That is expected because this is a self-signed certificate, not a certificate signed by those big name SSL providers, VeriSign, etc. So that's fine. And that's all I gotta do. Once it's in this keychain access program, that's it. I can just close keychain access. The next task is to make the OpenBazaar service run all the time as long as our OpenBazaar server's VPN is running. We do that by creating a system service. Ubuntu uses a service manager called Upstart, and so what we're going to do is download an Upstart script for Open OpenBazaar and put it into the Upstart init script folder. I'm going to paste in this command. wget is a way of downloading files. We're going to download this file from GitHub and it's a an upstart script that I created. So I'm just gonna run that. Uh, we can see it there. I'm gonna cat the contents, openbazaar.conf, and we could change a few things in here if we wanted to. The IP address for one, uh, this is the IP address that the OpenBazaar server instance is going to allow to log in. Um, if your home IP address is static, go ahead and change that to your static IP address of your home router or if not, just leave it 0000. zero, zero, zero. This um, script says, well, there's the description. It's a service for OpenBazaar server. And then this is when this script should run. These are system run levels. Basically, when the computer's running, OpenBazaar should be running. And this is when to stop running, when the computer shuts down, I believe. And then the, these are the commands that it would, well, these are the commands that the script will run to start the OpenBazaar server. One is activating the Python virtual environment, and then the second one is starting the server. And then these are the username and group to run the daemon as. This is saying respawn if the OpenBazaar server crashes. And that's it. Okay. So we're going to copy that file. We'll need sudo. Uh, copy openbazaar.conf to the upstart init directory, which is etc init and then it's going to be openbazaar.conf and then we need to change the um, permissions of the file to 644 and thank you to the guy who wrote this it was not me thank you to all the open bazaar people by the way this is a great program we need to change mod uh, change the permissions of the 
in its script. Just like that. Uh, right, we need sudo. Sudo. Okay. Now we should be able to run the command service. Uh, we'll need sudo for it. sudo service, and this is um, upstart. Well, it might be more than upstart, but it's the way of managing services on Ubuntu. It's sudo service followed by the service name, which is open bazaar. That's just set by the, the file name of the upstart script. And then we run a command um, such as start, stop, or restart. So we'll do status. And we see the open bazaar um, server is stopped. It's waiting for input. So what we can do is tell it to start. Now we see that open bazaar is um, started and it's running. Let's see the server output. How do you get to that? Because it's running in the background, we can't see the normal server output that displays. What we do is look at its log and upstart creates this for us. We'll need sudo and we'll cat out the log which is in there. Log upstart open bazaar dot log. We cat that out and we see that open bazaar is running great with all these connections um, going in between other people's stores. It's perfect. We are ready to log out of the server, close the terminal, and open up our client and connect our client to the open bazaar server. If you don't have it already, go on over to openbazaar.org slash download and get the Open Bazaar client for your operating system. I've got it already, and I'll bring it up here. Mine is already running because I have it connected to a, a different server that's dedicated as my store server. It's not a VPS, it's just in my house. What we're going to do is go over to, like if this is your first time running, you'll have to walk through the, the setup steps. Well. In the setup steps, you can actually set the server IP address and password. If you have it running already, go to um, I had my face. Go to the settings. Go to advanced. Um, find the server settings button. Click change. Then here you'll enter the IP address of your virtual private server. That SSL is on. Username is. Chris and my password. My lips hurt real bad. The ports should be perfectly uh, at their defaults. And then we click Save Changes and it'll connect to our server. And there it is, people. If you've got to this step, congratulations. You've just created um, a store in the cloud. Um, and you connected to it. Good job. You can go ahead and set up your store now and start listing. But be careful. There's something you need to be vigilant about, and that is backups. If for some reason your VPS crashes or it's hacked, um, you're going to want to have a backup. And there's one important directory to backup on your VPS. It's in the home directory, and it's hidden. So if you lsla, files or directories that start with a dot are hidden, um, it's this folder right here dot open bazaar. You would just want to copy every, that entire folder on a regular basis to your local computer and use whatever storage method you know to be secure because your entire store is in there. If someone gets a hold of this file they can impersonate you. We've hardened the VPS. It's unlikely that someone will crack in but it's you know it's possible. I guess what I'm trying to say is keep a backup. Run regular updates on your VPS and that's as simple as going sudo app get y install nope that's wrong sudo app get y update and sudo app get slash y upgrade those two commands right there are important to run on a regular basis copying my password and backups are important as well that's it for this video um, if you liked give me a thumbs up if you dislike give me a thumbs down thanks for watching and be free